There you go. Well done. Well done. All right. Hour being 7.02 p.m. on Monday, April 25th, 2022. I'd like to call to order the city council meeting in the city of Laconia. Uh, first things first, um, wondering if uh, our guest this evening, Chief Biotti, would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chief. We're joined this evening by our recording secretary and uh, city clerk, um, Katie Gargano. Um, Katie, if you can call the roll, please. Councillor Cheney. Here. Councillor Susi. Here. Councillor Littman. Here. Councillor Haynes. Here. Councillor Hamill. Present. Councillor Fouch. Here. Mayor Hosmer. Mayor Hosmer is here. Thank you. We're also joined this evening at council table uh, is uh, Fire Chief Kirk Biotti, who is filling in for uh, City Manager Scott Myers this evening. Uh, also, we have Wes Anderson, uh, DPW Director, filling in for um, Glenn Smith, our finance director who handles the IT for us. Welcome. Appreciate the fact that you could all fill in this evening. Um, moving right along on the agenda here, item number 7A, which are the regular meeting minutes of April 11th, 2022. The minutes of the meeting were distributed to the city council on April 15th, 2022, without, with no corrections or changes submitted to the clerk. The minutes will be accepted as distributed. Happy to pump the brakes a little here until you give us the go ahead. I think we're not going to get into tonight. There we go. All right. Good to go. Uh, next on our agenda under consent and action items is item 8A, which is temporary traffic order 2022-04, Wake the Lake. A request has been received to hold Wake the Lake on Lakeside Avenue on May 20th, to 22nd, 22, 2022, from the hours of 5 p.m. on Friday, May 20th, to 5 p.m. on Sunday, May 22nd. The actual hours of operation for the event will be from 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. on Friday, May 20th, 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. on Saturday, May 21st, and from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday, May 22nd. Section 161-4 of the city's code uh, indicates in part that outdoor sound shall not operate past the hour of 9 p.m. Sunday through Thursday, in 10 p.m. on Friday and Saturday, with the exception of Motorcycle Week. The organizer of this event is requesting that the time set forth as shown above be extended to allow bands to play for until 11 p.m. on Friday, May 20th, and Saturday, May 21st. The Special Events Review Committee approved this request at their April 6, 2022 meeting. A map of the event is attached to your packet this evening. Please note that paid parking on Lakeside Avenue will not yet be in effect during this event. So right now I'd be looking for a motion to approve temporary traffic order 2022-04, wake the lake, approve a waiver of all licensing and special event fees, extend the hours of operation of sound equipment and or loudspeakers for wake the lake from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Friday. Nobody likes to hear their own voice, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, 
uh, from uh, 10 to 11 p.m. on Friday, May 20th, 2022, and Saturday, May 21st, 2022, and allow alcohol consumption on city property in the designated, designated areas only. It's a big ask. <clears throat> Uh, so made by Councillor Felch. Is there a second from Councillor Cheney? Is there any further discussion on this matter? I have one question. Okay, Councillor Susi, Fire Chief. Okay, sure. Since that's you know the whole that whole ways area, is, I, do you know, locate an ambulance or a truck somewhere in that area, or does it still come out of the station of the Weirs? No, we still come out of the Weir station. Okay, so, you don't foresee any problems getting down in there if you need to. No, we haven't had any issues in the in, since they've been doing this for a few different events. We haven't had any issues um, getting down into where we need to go or getting around if we had to get around. Okay, thank you. How many years have we been doing this now? Was this six years for Wake Lake? Six, yeah. five years. Okay. Councilor Lippman, just like to ask a clarification. Um, I understand the the um, one a.m. and the eleven p.m. and all that stuff, but. What are you doing at 7 a.m. Um, in the morning in terms of loudspeakers and things like that? In terms of, do you, would you like to come, come right up, Anthony, and just introduce yourself for the record? Anthony Sanigate, Tower Hill Tavern, The Big House, Wake the Lake, Mike Tempest, all that stuff. Um, yeah, we have breakfast in the morning, so there's really just put on a little music outside through, through a uh, PA system. People eat breakfast. No, I just... No bands. Concerned about people if we're going to 1 a.m. Yeah, no. and they're waking them up at 7 a.m. I don't think that's yeah, fair, no. but that's not what you're doing. Okay. Yeah, I, I, good question. I would agree. I think we have gone through the battle of, of quieting down the noise there. And then 7 a.m., I have a, I, I, I guess I should have thought about this, but 7 a.m., Henry and I sleep late. <laughs> Um, have we had, I mean, I don't, probably Scott would be the best person to ask, have we had any complaints in previous years when the, starting at 7 a.m. in the morning? No, and I, I can tell you he keeps it down. It's not like a live band or anything. Because the band starts at noon. Play it. Okay. Yeah. So you play cool jazz or something in the chill morning? Music. Uh, <laughs> very, actually, very chill music. Very chill. Actually, anything he likes that music. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other questions for Anthony while we have him here? Any other questions or discussion about the motion that's on the table? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your hands that six votes in the affirmative that motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Is that for all three or do I have to? Uh, no. <laughs> nice <laughs> try, though. I stay right that, was, that was the easy one. Item number 8B, which is temporary traffic order 2022-06, Laconia Bike Timberfest. A, a request has been made to hold Laconia Bike Timberfest on September 16th to September 18th, 2022, from the hours of 5 p.m. on Friday, September 16th to 5 p.m. Sunday, September 18th. Actual hours of operation of the event will be from 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. on Friday. September 16th from 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. on Saturday, September 17th, and from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday, September 18th. Section 161-4 of the city's code states that in particular that the outdoor sound shall not operate past the hour of 9 p.m. Sunday to, th to Thursday and 10 p.m. on Friday and Saturday with the exception of Motorcycle Week. Uh, the organizer of the event is requesting that time set forth as shown above be extended to allow bands to play until 11 p.m. on Friday, September 16th, and Saturday, September 17th. The Special Events Review Committee approved this request at their April 6, 2022 meeting. Again, there's a map attached to it. The organizer is also, uh, of the event is also asking for a waiver of all licensing and special event fees associated with the event. So right now, I'll be looking for a motion to move to approve Temporary Traffic Order 2022-06, Laconia Bike Timberfest, approve a waiver of all licensing and special event fees associated with the event, extend the hours of operation of sound equipment and or loudspeakers for Bike Timberfest from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Friday, September 16th, 2022, and Saturday, September 17th, 2022, and allow alcohol consumption on city property in the designated areas only. So made by Councillor Feltz, seconded by Councillor Cheney. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Councillor Susi. 
I noticed that on the other two, the um, uh, parking meters and all are all not going to be in, working. But during this one, are the parking meters working? Not in the designated drinking area, but the rest of the detail will work. Not in the designated drinking area. I didn't see that on, it's on the map. It's on the map. Okay. Yes. So I just want to note that that was for Bike Timberfest on the agenda. The Wicked Weirs was first. Oh, we've got them mixed up. Okay. So we had, that was actually 8C. Yep. Thank you very much. I do have one question. Go right ahead. Um, Wes, who sets up all the barricades for this? Or is there any? Yeah. I, the uh, DPW drops off some of the barricades and I set up my barricades. So I got bicycle fence and they drop off a couple of the big orange things you fill with water. Drop them off. Yeah. You take care yeah, of it. Yeah, I set it up. Yeah. Any other questions or concerns? Uh, of seeing none, all those in favor of the motion on the table, please indicate by raising your hand. Six votes in the affirmative, and that motion passes. That's number 8C if you're following along. Thank you, Anthony. Let's move on to 8B, which is the Wicked Weirs. Temporary Traffic Order 2022-05, Wicked Weirs. Once again, and finally, a request has been made to hold Wicked Weirs on October 28th to October 30th, 2022, from the hours of 5 p.m. Friday, October 28th to 5 p.m. on Sunday, October 30th, 2022. Actual hours of the event will be from 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. Friday, October 28th from 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. on Saturday, October 29th, and from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday. October 30th. Section 161 4 of the city's code states that in part that outdoor sound shall not operate past the hour of 9 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and 10 p.m. on Friday and Saturday, with the exception of Motorcycle Week. The organizer of the event is requesting that the time set forth as shown above be extended to allow bands to play until 11 p.m. on Friday, October 28th, and Saturday, October 29th. The Special Events Review Committee approve this request at their April 6th, 2022 meeting. Once again, there is a map attached. The organizer of the event is also asking for a waiver of all licensing and special event fees associated with the event. Please note that paid parking on Lakeside Avenue will no longer be in effect during this event. Again, we're we'll looking for a, a motion to move to approve temporary traffic order 2022-05 Wicked Weirs approve a waiver for all licensing and special event fees associated with the event, extend the hours of operation of sound equipment and or loudspeakers for Wicked Weirs from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Friday, October 28th, 2022, and Saturday, October 29th, 2022, and allow alcohol consumption on city property in the designated areas only. We do need one amendment on that. that is the last date which uh, Chief Biani pointed out to me should be October 29th, not the 30th, on the second to last line. So, so made by Councillor Felt, seconded by Councillor Cheney. Any further discussion of this matter or questions to Anthony? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. That's six votes in the affirmative, and that motion passes. Thank you again, Thank Anthony. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Moving on to item number nine, which is citizens' comments for matters not on the agenda. If you'd like to make a comment about a matter not on tonight's agenda, now would be the appropriate time, uh, whether you're here in the chamber or you are viewing online. So please step forward. And is there anyone online raising his or her hand? So we've got, um, moving on to item number 13 right now, which is public hearings. Uh, right now under 13A, it's public hearing for ordinance 2022-221 to amend the city code chapter 221, vehicles and traffic regarding increasing the parking fees on Lakeside Avenue at Endicott Park. Notice of this public hearing was made available in the April 13th, 2022 edition of the Laconia Daily Sun and posted at Laconia City Hall. Offices of the SAU number 30, Laconia Community Center, and the Laconia Public Library on April 14th, 2022. 
action on this item may be taken up under unfinished business this evening. So right now at 7.17 p.m., I'd like to open the public hearing on this matter. If anyone would like to speak, hi, Mr. Ames, come right on up. Hello. Nice to see you, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Good. Um, I wanted to make some comments about um, the, the proposal. Um, in fact, I have quite a few comments to make. Um, and we'll start with the increase in fees on Lakeside Avenue and at Endicott Road Park. I have no, no objections to the increase in fees. I think that it, um, we all know how inflation is raging right now and expenses are rising. And I know that there's been a lot of problems with the kiosk and they need maintenance and and some of this expense will, um, some of the raise in fees will go to help um, the, the maintenance of the kiosk. Um, my major objection is to the um, increase in the amount that is allocated to um, the beach um, refurbishment fund. Uh, currently that's been at 25,000 since the early, since the late 1990s where funds that go, that are accrued at the beach from parking go into a special fund to improve the beach. And it's been set at 25,000 since the late 90s. And this proposal would have that increased to 30,000. Um, it's a $5,000 a hit to the, the replenishment fund that I do not, that I am not in favor of. I'm looking, um, I looked through um, the capital improvement requests and there's uh, quite a long list of things that are needed at the beach, which is really the jewel of, of the weirs. And it's the main attraction feature. Um, just to go through this list, um, Weirs Beach water access and accessible picnic tables is one of the items on the uh, capital improvement list. Um, the pads would provide access to the water's edge while being removable and lightweight. The picnic tables and routes to them are a necessity. Weir's Beach needs to be completely ADA accessible. This pad and picnic tables with routes will accomplish this task. That is an $11,000 item. Uh, another item on the list is Weir's Beach gazebo and lifeguard chair replacement. The gazebo at Weir's Beach is in disrepair and needs a new look. Lifeguard chairs are all in poor shape and are not meant for larger individuals. This needs to be rectified. The gazebo at the weirs needs to be replaced. We would like to see it have walls in order to accommodate local brochures as the staff has always asked for recommendations. The lifeguard chairs are at least 30 years old, are very narrow and of poor design. They need replacing before we get lifeguards at Weirs Beach. The estimated cost of this project is $30,000. Third on the list is playground replacement at Endicott Rock Park, Weir's Beach. A new kid-friendly playground should be installed. The playground that is current at the beach was designed for fitness. It is also in disrepair. This playground would remain in the same area, but be geared more towards children. This would need to be ADA accessible and will require a fence around the entire structure plus fall zones. This is a $200,000 item. And then there are a couple of items that are that are um, proposed that would be for all the parks in Laconia, including all the beaches, and that would be trash bell replacement, um, which has a cost of one hundred and ten thousand. We don't know exactly what the Weir's Beach portion of that would be, but I'm sure it's considerable, as well as picnic table replacements throughout the parks, which would replace the current completely wooden tables with stainless steel metal frames. And that's a $60,000 project for the city. And of course, the Weir's part would also be considerable. And on top of all these five, on top of these five projects that I just mentioned, we have the major project <coughs> of re replenishing the sand at the beach, a project that was started 10 years ago and it still has not been completed. Um, and that, that is a very expensive project, which would include um, redoing the jetty at the Weir's. And there's uh, ideas of putting a gazebo or a lighthouse at the end of the jetty if the funding were available. So for if you add up all these, these items, the need at, at uh, Weir's Beach for any kind of funding is, is terrific. So I, I, I request that the council do, does not change the 30,000, I mean the 25,000 to 30,000, they should leave it as is. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Ains. Do you, do you have any ideas? Um, if you don't mind, if you have a question for you. Um, so the first $25,000 goes into general revenue. This would increase it to the first $30,000 goes into general revenue. So the city would be picking up an additional $5,000 to help offset some of the expenses of, with the meters. Um, and, and you obviously it's, you see that 5,000 cutting into what, what the, what would the weirs is getting? How, how do we, how do we keep up with the inflation and the needed expense of, of the meters? If we just keep it at the same, even though we're increasing fees, it, it seems it's good for, it's good for the weirs, which, which is, which is great. And I get it. I don't know if it takes care of the city's portion that with any increase in expenses they have with them. That's well, according to the uh, information that that was um, given out, um, the, the increase in fees is going to result in approximately um, another $35,000 to the general fund. I think that was that would be way more than is needed for the upkeep of the kiosks. Okay. I can explain that too. The portion that's going towards the beach is just coming from the parking lot at the beach. So gotcha. the rest of the income from the, the lakeside app would go to the okay. fund. All right, but I didn't, I didn't know that. Please, Ames. yes, absolutely. Mr. Ames, one yes. thing so you'll know, the lifeguard chairs and the gazebo, all that's already been being funded in this year's budget. Okay, the manager has made that request and has put it into effect. They got it out here for $26,000. Well, that's great, but, okay. there's, but there's a lot more. That's there's a lot good. more, but we only have so much to spread. I right. mean, I understand that, but right. I, I just wanted to let you know that's already included. But that's what's great about this fund is because every year it, it increases it by a little bit, and every year they can do more and more. Um, I wanted to add that over the years, um, the um, the fund has 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 spent seventy thousand dollars on. Re on redoing the, the bathhouses at the beach. That was done best recently in 2020. And before that, almost $70,000 went towards this, the engineering studies on replenishing the beach. A lot of money has been used for good use for that fund. It hasn't just sat there. Right, so, no, you, it, and it, it's come a long ways over the years there. So, and thanks to your efforts uh, and, and others. So not to be taken for granted by any means and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Any other comments on the public hearing? Of course. Oh. I'll make it quick, kind of. Nice tie. Thank you. Thank oh. you very much. A little crooked. <laughs> I uh, obviously agree with what Robert just said. Um, I think. I don't have to go over everything he said. I just want to agree with that. I was also, what got my attention, Mr. Mayor, was when you referenced to the meters up at Weir's Beach. And I wish we still had meters instead of these kiosks. And I'm stunned, stunned to hear that they're not working well and more money has to be put into them. Um, I just would like everybody to take note of that. And the other thing is, um, I think you're going from a dollar to, correct me if I'm wrong, it's going from a dollar to a dollar 50 an hour? $1.25. dollar to a dollar 25. You ought to go higher. Should we go $2 to make it one number? Yeah, I, I, I really think that most people are not going to have an issue with the $2. Uh, the money is being put to good, re, to good uh, use. So I, I don't, I would just consider that. I think uh, in today's world, two dollars is not really that unreasonable. That's just a thought I'm saying. It, it's not a big deal, uh, whether you do it or not. But that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Sinclair. Anyone? Anyone online? All right, so I'd like to close the public hearing at 7.27 p.m. on item number 13A. <clears throat> Moving along to item number 13B.
is a public hearing for resolution 2022-05 relative to submitting a grant application to and accepting a grant funding from American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 for the Northern Lakeport Area Sewer Replacement Project. Notice of this public hearing was made available on April 13th, 2022, edition of the Laconia Daily Sun and posted at Laconia City Hall, offices of the SAU number 30, 30 Laconia Community Center and Laconia Public Library on April 14th, 2022. Action on this item may be taken up under unfinished business. I'd like to open the public hearing at 7.28 p.m. Anyone wishing to speak to this matter, now would be the appropriate time, either here in the chamber or online. Tells me to close it in the same way. Oh, that just seems wrong. Excuse me. All right, we'll close the public hearing at 7.28 and 48 seconds p.m. Item number 13C, public hearing for resolution 2022-06 relative to submitting a grant application to and accepting grant funding from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 for wastewater planning. Notice of this public hearing was made available in the April 13th, 2022 edition of the Laconia Daily Sun and posted at Laconia City Hall, offices of SAU number 30, Laconia Community Center and the Laconia Public Library on April 14th, 2022. Action on this item may be taken up under unfinished business. I'd like to open the public hearing on this matter at 7.29 p.m. Anyone either in the chamber or online who would like to speak to this matter, now would be the appropriate time. Can you encourage them a little, Wes, to talk, to speak up? <laughs> Something, prod them? All right, well, we'll close the public hearing on this matter at 7.30 p.m. Um, moving right along to item number 15, which is the mayor's report. The only thing I'd like to speak to, which we saw in the newspaper uh, late last week was the, um, um, the canceling or postponement of uh, Pumpkin Fest. Uh, again, for 2022, we haven't had it the past couple of years because of COVID related issues. Um, and um, uh, I think the article laid out pr pretty much some of the challenges they were having both with sponsorships. Uh, some of the vendors are no longer in business anymore because it's difficult to find the folks to run some of these um, rides and, and uh, some of the games, the attractions that travel. Um, that's been a problem. And, and I think uh, volunteers, um, uh, things of that nature it was sort of a confluence of of, of um, <clears throat> items that just put it in a position where um, uh, it didn't seem to be a viable option for this October. I will say good news that once it was announced that the by, uh, a pumpkin fest was going to be postponed again, um, it seems to have driven a, quite a bit of interest from those in the community that said, we don't want to postpone it and we want to know what it would take to to have it this year so um carmen gifford and um and, and i have been chatting uh over the course of the weekend we have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow i believe sometime in the next couple of weeks there will be a more public meeting um downtown i think which will indicate this is what um, we envision for this year for pumpkin fest uh, and what it's going to take to lift this off the ground and make it successful. So um, I'm really enthused that people in the community spoke up and, and uh, indicate, indicated what was important to them and what they wanted. I think our next step right now is to um, uh, find out what it's going to take from our local businesses and um, uh, schools, volunteers, whatever the case may be, but we'll know better in the next couple of weeks what that looks like. So um, if you're not, it looks like Pumpkin Fest is... I've got a chance of coming back this year, which is, I think, great news. Uh, moving on to uh, council comments under number 16. Do we have any council comments tonight? Councilor Hamill. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to just speak of 
for a brief time uh, about uh, a little known gem we have in Laconia, and that's uh, Lakes Region Public Access TV. Um, it, it, I don't want to say it's going through some difficult times, but uh, we would be looking for some board members uh, from Meredith, uh, Laconia, uh, Guilford, Belmont, uh, to some people to step up and, uh, you know, apply to the board. We're looking uh, for a, a, a an ex large member uh, for the uh, committee uh, from Laconia, because uh, one of them left. And, uh, you know, it would be really great uh, if these uh, different communities would put some people on this. Uh, it's making it difficult to have uh, board, boards, um, you know, that we have enough people there to vote. So uh, I just wanted to get the word out there. If anybody was interested, they could uh, go to the different city halls and ask about it. It's a truly, uh, they do amazing things, you know, from the children's auction to the county commission meetings to our meetings, uh, all kinds of videos that uh, the public sector can, you know, put on a television station 26. Uh, and uh, they will lease out or let people, you know, if you want to do a, an event or whatever, film something, uh, they'll lent out uh, cameras that you can do that. And then you bring them back, they download it, and it'll be on uh, on the station. They do the, the uh, Christmas parade. They just do a number, number of things uh, for the local area. And uh, it would be a shame to see this go away. So I'm just kind of hitting the drum here to see if we can get some people to uh, join our board. Uh, Grace uh, McNamara is the director. And uh, since she's taken over, God, it's got to be at least 10 years now, maybe a little more time goes by so quick, but she has been a, a just a dramatic firecracker there that's uh, got things going and, uh, uh, but you know, she needs some help and we need some help. So it's something that I think it really benefits the area and the community and all around the lakes region. So hopefully some people will step up to help out. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Hamill. Do you have any, um, maybe we can get back to this another, at another meeting, but how much um, Lakes Region Public Access receives from the city of Laconia? Um, it's around 29,000. It, it all goes by the subscriptions uh, for Metrocast and for, what is it now? Breeze Line. Breeze Line. So it's a, it's, is, it a, is it a pass through the city based on the contract with Breeze Line or Metrocast? Yes. Yeah, the city, the, the city, um, well, to, to be honest with you, I, I just remembered we are changing that way we're doing that because subscriptions have gone down a lot. Mm -hmm. And in order to fund the station, <coughs> we had to come up with a new formula. So the formula now is based on population for each town and city. So, um, you know, and to keep the station going, uh, that's what we had to do. Um, if, and I don't know, um, since Comcast is so new, uh, we didn't have a subscription number from them. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have from Breeze Line. Breeze Line. <laughs> we do have from Breeze Line. They sent once you ask them, they'll send one to the city or the towns and give you give them their subscription amount of subscriptions they have. But like I said, uh, the formulas just weren't working out, and we would have had to charge some towns a whole lot more. So it made more sense going by population. And that contract is up sometime within within the, within two years, isn't it? Maybe a year and a half with with Breeze Line. Like, well, the, the the consortium right now is actually negotiating with them, right. uh, the different cities uh, who uh, are under their cable. That's so right. I would think uh, uh, Comcast would have to do the same thing, uh, but they are not totally built out yet. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, we can't do a whole lot with that until they get built up. Because they're not, um, so on, on you know, Atlantic Broadband, um, we have channels 25, 26, 24, 25, and 26 that we put on the air. Uh, and on Com Comcast right now, we don't have that. So um, I'm on Comcast, I can't see on TV these meetings or anything from LRPA. 
So, you know, I've been talking to Scott about that to try and push them to make available those public channels because federal law says they have to. Um, and hopefully we can get a contribution from them also, which is gray area there, but uh, they're, they're supposed to help contribute towards public access TV. It's required by law, FCC. So that's kind of where we are uh, right now. But it's, uh, it's a great uh, facility. Uh, we, we purchased some very expensive equipment to make everything uh, digital and streamline and uh, it can be uh, put online. And, and uh, you know, we've just done a tremendous amount from what it was. I don't know, I think I've been on it like 15 years now. So it made a big difference in what we've done there. Yeah, and, then, and I can tell you, I'm at the children's auction every year, all week long. And the quality this year was just awesome what they did with our broadcasting. Thank you. Any other council comments this evening? <laughs> Councilor Cheney. Oh, thank you. Um, I uh, would ask that uh, the manager provide us with information about uh, the health insurance contract uh, between the school department and the other departments, public works, police, fire, and city hall. And, and a, a brief uh, comment, it, it's come to my attention, that's why I'm asking for a report, it's come to my attention that uh, th there are benefits at at the school department in, in, in health insurance for the partner uh, that is not available to the other departments. And I'd like to hear if in fact, A, that's true. I hope the chief's making notes and B, um, uh, if so, why is that? Why is there that disparity between teachers and everybody else? That's number one. I'm sure you were hoping for a short meeting. Um, I was hoping we could set some sort of a, a meeting to discuss with the folks in the northwestern quadrant of the city, uh, specifically places like uh, uh, Windermere Heights, Turner Way, and some other areas. Obviously, as the state school project uh, starts to come to fruition. I suspect water and sewer will expand in that area. Uh, but I have, uh, uh, I have constituents who live in that upper reach who are asking, when are we gonna see water and sewer up here? And I think that's a fair question uh, that if we set up a meeting, we could talk to them, talk to public works, uh, talk to the water department and get some idea of when that sort of infrastructure is going to be uh, uh, moving in their direction. In the case of Turnerway, I'm aware uh, they have uh, a single well, or there may be two wells, to service the, the street. And now they're having problems with the wells running dry. Uh, uh, Councilor Susi is aware because he's heard this at water uh, commission meetings. So I'd, anyways, I'd like to know if you could find a way to set up meetings so they could come in, tell you what their problems are, uh, tell you what their hopes are, and uh, maybe we could start to design some sort of infrastructure expansion to include sewer water and whatever other services need to be in those areas. So noted. Well, thank you. Um, There's more. Oh, yes. I spoke with the uh, public works director uh, last week, I believe, and uh, talked about the sewer inspections. And uh, he had not been, I had asked him, in fact, I think through the manager, but <clears throat> I'd asked him to see what it might cost for the city to include these private sewer systems. Um, it's my understanding, and obviously the public works director is here, but it's been difficult to, to gather that data and information. Um, and and I, I hope he, he can make a comment, but I just wanna keep that sewer inspection issue 
on our radar because you know all those people are paying the same sewer rates that everybody else on the sewer system pays everybody else gets their inspection done by the city uh, and then these folks that are in private communities like south down and some of the others uh, are asked to pay a separate fee for what we give everybody else who and they pay the exact same water and sewer rates so i'm hoping we can find a way to include them and this quite a number of private systems. Uh, that's part of our issue. We're over 100 right now. We're there you go. You know, I, I, so I just wanted to keep on the radar here that that sewer inspection and maintenance uh, inspections, uh, we need to, to get some sort of an estimate from Public Works about what it might, might mean. So I understand that we do this every five, do some portion over a five year period. Um, I, I don't know whether five years is statutory or necessary, <clears throat> extend it out to six or seven years and then include some of these private ones to cut down on the, on the, the cost of it. But I, I'm working, I hope to work with the public works director to get some of this information. Again, I want to, keep it on the radar here. Um, and then finally, you brought up Pumpkin Fest, and I had a note about Pumpkin Fest, and, and I hope we, I, I hope we give some thought to maybe we ought to manage it differently. They proposed moving to Guilford, you may remember, and somebody just told me the other day, they proposed moving to the Tilton Mall. <clears throat> um, I understand it's the Lakes Region Chamber of Commerce, but this is the Laconia Pumpkin Fest. And uh, I, I want to see more Laconia uh, in that than Lakes Region. Thank you, Councilor Cheney. When the uh, meeting gets scheduled in the next couple of weeks, so make sure to make sure that you're aware of it and hopefully you can be there and, and speak Welcome. up. It'd be really important, I think. Thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> Any more council comments or Yes. Um, okay. Okay. Wes, <clears throat> could we get you to the, the mic uh, for a second? Carmen Gifford. So here. as far as water up the Turnaway and Windermere Heights and all that, I know you've checked into that because uh, you've been in front of us several times. And um, I, I believe you kind of have rough, rough estimates of what it would be to bring stuff there if we went to the road. For the water, it was, it's about three, four years old right now, that was yep. around $3 million <laughs> because you're going to have to put a pump station and you're going to have to put a tank. That's, yeah, that's before have. all this inflation and everything. So, and that would be up, uh, up towards plant, plant peddler, correct? The tank? Well, the, yeah, basically you'd have to put it up in the high spot someplace around pedal push. So the water, even if they brought it in the state school property, then you got to go two, three miles to these other places. When, wouldn't have, wouldn't when, we did, when we did the estimate, we were basically coming from the Hilliard Road area coming towards pedal pushers versus coming up from the state okay. school property. So my next question is, in order for these systems to work, both water and sewer, what's, what's the rough estimate of the number of houses you're gonna need to make the water so it won't stagnate and the sewer so it'll move? Uh, I'd have to go back and check the other the piece for water and talk with Ben Crawford over at uh, the water department uh, because we're not at, we're not at a critical mass yet. We're not at a point where we're going to be dumping water to keep it. Right. That's what right. we did up in, up in uh, yep. Aqua Soleil there, whatever they call that up there, because we had to leave the water running from that tank to make sure the water was okay, right? Yeah, correct. And then the other side of the sewer side is basically we need a minimum of flow for the size line. So it's really going to depend upon what the planning department thinks the build outs there, because you're going to have to put your lines into the size of that build out, and then you're gonna to have to backwards figure out what's your minimum flow from there to be able to, to reasonably connect and have a, enough flow to make the system. So you work. might need 200 homes to do that. Correct. Or, or more. Or more. We'll just have to sit and yeah. do it. But it's really, once you put it in the ground, you're basing it based off what you think your build out's gonna be. Right. Because yeah. otherwise you'll be doing it And if it doesn't it move, again. you'll be constantly there trying to push it along, right? Right. Okay. Um, Going back to the private lines, uh, private sewer lines in the private communities. 
they're private, correct? We, correct. Didn't, we didn't put anything in there, no. those places. No, uh, basically since 1975, the city ordinance says that our responsibility ends at the main and the property owner is responsible from the main in, and it just so happens on your larger South Downs, Long Bay, uh, Weirs Beach Village and some of the others, they have multiple streets in there, but it's still private property. Right. So them being charged uh, water and sewer, which they have city water, city sewer, and then sewer dumps into the public. Correct. Sewer. Yes. On route on Prairie Road. Yep. So they should pay to get rid of the sewerage. Correct. They're paying exactly what the other people yep. are paying for the city portion and the Winnipesaukee River Basin portion of the collection system. So since we didn't put anything in there, I mean, it's not our responsibility to inspect them. Correct. Okay. So basically it's from the paperwork that you gave us a couple of weeks ago uh, when we had that meeting, um, it's not the city council that's making them do that, or it's not a tax the city council is putting on them. It's a requirement from the state. Yeah. Actually, it's a requirement from EPA. Okay. And EPA doesn't say a, an inspection requirement. They don't say how many you know, years between inspection. They just say it has to be sufficient to prevent overflows. <coughs> right. So what, what the EPA, which part of the state, um, is requiring the city to do is to gather that information. Correct. When, when we are required to report it, we're required to report the city system entirely, which includes all the private. All the private. Yes. Okay. So, so the EPA is telling you as public director to gather that information. It's not us. Correct. Okay. So this is my concern. So th this thing we had a couple of weeks ago that, um, that we were supposed to vote on. And they, we had several here from South Down Shore that, you know, called it a tax or rip off, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they live in a private community. That was their choice. They buy in a co private community. Now it's their choice. Um, so if the EPA is the one mandating this inspection, then in my mind, all these private communities need to go argue with them, not us. It's the EPA requiring it and they're requiring you to do it. But if, if they got a beef with getting an inspection in there, then that's not our deal. That's the EPA and they should be talking with them, not us. Because when that comes back, I'm not going to vote for it because it's already a rule through the EPA that this be done. So if they want to refuse to do it, then they can go talk to the EPA. That's the way I look at this. Every, every sewage treatment plant needs a permit to operate. And in the case of New Hampshire, the, the Boston branch of the EPA is the one that issues the permit yeah. to us. And in this case, the permit was for the wastewater treatment plant. In other words, the state system and all 10 organizations that send their sewage to it. So we all have to abide by those rules. <clears throat> That's fine. But I mean, to you know, say they're not going to do it or, you know, sue us and, and all this stuff. I mean, that's not our mandate. That's a mandate of a governmental office. Correct. And they should be discussing with them of why or why not they can't do it, not us. I mean, that shouldn't even come before us right now. I mean, that's their beef is with EPA, not us. And it, it's making us look like the bad guys trying to put in all these requirements. And it's not our requirement. Okay. Um, Councilor <clears throat> Susie. The only question I have, Bob, and I don't disagree with you, but the mandate is coming to the city to gather all that data. I understand <coughs> if they don't want to do it. But then we could lose our permit at our sewer plant. We wouldn't lose the permit. What would probably happen is EPA would come to us and it more likely would come to us when there was an incident, a major sewage spill and determine what we're going to do to about, about fixing the problem. And depending upon what happens and how it goes, we, could, we may have to sign a consent decree, which basically says this is what we're going to do. And it's a contract between us and EPA. OK, so just for instance, we decide we're going to go in there and inspect it for them. Yeah. Does, is, is, first of all, you need to get permission from every street or whatever to go on in there, because I hear there's quite a few different developments in South Down, 
uh, we would have to have permission of the property owners. In the case of Southdown Long Bay, and I'll know I know more about Long Bay than I do Southdown. I think there's three sub villages in Long Bay plus the master uh, Long Bay Association. So, so you get in there and you inspect it and you say, well, that's wrong. This one, this one's leaking. It's close to the water. All this stuff. You got to fix it. So, were you responsible for fixing it if you if you camera it? So, so my 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 concern on this is where I understand the challenges you're bringing up, and and I can't say I disagree with them. I think we're getting into a lot of hypotheticals here and asking West to weigh in on that. We might be out a little in front of. You're talking about consent decrees and what's going to be required. Yeah. It just gets a little problematic, and I'd hate to think the public might be relying on this to, to some extent. I mean, I think <clears throat> I think we've still got some work to do. Well, we do definitely, but I just think uh, to begin with, uh, to put that ordinance in front of us with everything that's so gray with this, and we're not the one that's come come up with this. If they have questions about what their responsibility is, then they should go to the EPA, not us. And they should set up meetings with the EPA to do that. Uh, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you. Whether well, it's the EPA directive that's coming through DES at the state level and then pushed down onto municipalities like the city. Um, you, you know, I just, I think we need to be strategic about this to the extent that, um, I, 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 I don't want the city in any way, shape, or form to come under a consent decree, which means we lose control of the entire process. And essentially, the federal government tells us what to do with a price tag. No, with a price tag that is could be astronomical. I, I don't, we cannot put the city in that position. I think that's really dangerous ground. So, but I, I don't have the resolution for you, but consent decrees do not work out well for parties that are significantly impacted by that. Can I just say, put that on Councilor the... Hamill, Go right what I asked for was an estimate of what it might cost. I mean, if it adds a thousand dollars a year to, and I'm sure it wouldn't, but if it added a thousand dollars a year to the city's expenses, I'm not sure that that anybody would want to vote against that. I just wanted to give us an estimate. That's where we're at at the moment. Who's responsible or whatever? That's so we're down the line, but right now, just tell me what it would cost if we did it. So I think there are a couple of things that we can do. I think what I would suggest we doing is making making this um, an, an an item on an agenda item coming up to, in in a, a date certain where West can put together as much of this information. <coughs> and I, I don't know what that looks like, Wes. What would you to put it together as much quality data as you can? We've done the hard part, I should say, we've done the first of the hard parts right now. We've actually got a count of all the, the systems, which is what was taking us some time. And then we got to take that and convert it into feet as mm -hmm. to how much we got. And then I can come up with an estimate. Also on the water and sewer, are you looking for an estimate on water, water, extending water and sewer out to Windermere Heights and Turner Way? And well, and, and, and a discussion about it. I mean, I. So at some point, obviously, this is some something that the um, council feels strongly about. So maybe those two, two items, if you can put it on your agenda. We know uh, we have nothing else to do. So you know, perhaps we'll and we'd have to have waterworks come in for the, the water side. Yes, yes, so. Yes. so maybe sometime uh, at the end of May might be a good time to do it if we can get it scheduled and we're not backed up with budget issues. Okay. But maybe giving 30, 30 days to do this might be helpful. And one more thing to ask Wes. While you're up at the podium, could you kind of enlighten us on where we are with the parking garage? The we have the uh, construction manager selected, and for about the last month or so, we've been working to get the contract finalized. That just got finalized last week, and our first uh, planning meeting is actually tomorrow. So we're we're back on progress. It's just all the all the contractors and consultants are busy. And so that delayed the actual Wait, development of the, tomorrow. Uh, public works. Nine. I'll send you. Uh, <laughs> okay. Are there any other council comments or liaison reports right now? Thank you, Wes. No comment. I think we're finished with. Oh, go right ahead. No, I'm all set. Okay.
Council comments and liaison, liaison reports are finished. Moving on right now to item number 19, which is citizens request a comment on current agenda items. If there's an agenda item you're particularly interested in, now would be the, the time to speak. Uh, that goes for both in the chamber and online. Welcome, Rusty. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we had a meeting, and I apologize. Rusty, speak up uh, maybe closer to the oh, mic. Yeah. Just to pick it up. That'd be great. Thank uh, you. I apologize for not being available at the last meeting. Um, I, for some reason, didn't know that we were having it. So, my error. Uh, I've talked to uh, three of you folks today about uh, concerns that you had during that last meeting, and some of them were that there was no uh, escalation of cost over the, value. over the appraised value over the 50 years seemed reasonable to me <laughs> but um, the thing about it is it says that there is the parking spaces may be relocated from the city hall and main street lots to the beacon street parking garage upon completion and its renovation by mutual agreement should the spots be really located the lease rate for the covered parking spaces shall be adjusted to the parking garage there is an escalator in those uh, when I can't tell you what it is right now, but there is an escalator in it. So that would take care of half of it. Um, there also is a section that says taxes and tax escalation. And it basically says, Valencia is also responsible for federal taxes assessed, assessed against the premises. The parties agree that during the period of this use, the lease property shall be assessed at the value of $1,000 per parking space. Because uh, Scott is not here and wasn't here today, I couldn't ask uh, whether or not there's an escalator there. I, my guess is there probably is, but it's not in the lease. So I have to find out tomorrow whether uh, Scott's going to be in, in tomorrow. Do you know what Scott is? Wednesday. Wednesday. Well, then I'll do it on Wednesday, and I will come back and talk to you or the secretary. Okay, either one. <coughs> Great. And uh, that way I would have an answer for those two escalator parts of this. And also, I was uh, saying that I thought that if there isn't an escalator, that there should be. And uh, we should do something like 1.5% for every five years of, of the 50 years, except that the first 10 years probably should stay the same. So we'd have 10 years at one figure, and then every five-year period, there should be another small escalator. And that would be our, our responsibility. And uh, I also uh, did walk and found this very interesting, walk the distance from the colonial to the parking lot behind the uh, behind the post office, from the Colonial to the parking lot behind the Wayfair, and from the Colonial to the uh, parking garage. Much to my surprise, the parking garage was the closest. <laughs> Uh, by a significant amount. So that's, that's going to be good. People are going to, once that's fixed, our people, those 18 families, you know, those nine families, um, I think are going to appreciate that. And 
So the last thing that I wanted to go over is what we were asking for is, and I thought that this had been agreed on, it is in the lease, but there doesn't seem to be an agreement on it, was that we get nine parking places over on the other side of the road and nine places at the behind the Wayfair. Uh, and then we wait to see what happens when we get the garage done. So that's really what I'm asking for. And I would assume we can't really uh, have a definitive answer to that until I talk to uh, Dr. Scott about what we can do with the, the money part of this. Okay. Councilor Jenny, sure. If you, I, would you take a question? Sure. Uh, 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 Rusty and I have had a conversation today. Uh, I'm not sure we agree on all the specifics here, but I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it worked out. Um, I, I want to make it plain that one of my concerns is this mutual consent uh, for the perpetuity of. I, I understand Rusty's point that folks would probably like to move to the garage. My concern is if one of them decides they don't want to move, they could create a situation where uh, they could hold the city up for some period of time uh, in, a, in, in some uh, move to improve that parking lot or whatever. A anyway, I think, uh, I think everyone here knows I was uh, the one who expressed concerns uh, two weeks ago. I talked with Rusty uh, at, at some length. Uh, I think he and I and Scott can, can make some minor adjustments to make this work uh, for all of us and uh, come back in two weeks with, with a better plan. Any other questions or comments for Rusty? Yeah, I do have one more uh, possibly answer to part of your question is the parking garage is significantly closer than I thought it was. It's less than 200 feet away. Yeah. The other parking lot by this building is 600 feet away. And, the, and just going from the theater to the back is 250 feet away. So it's, I would think it will be what people want to do. Now, the other part of this is that we are going to, or why was going to, because I thought the, the parking lot was, I didn't really think that, that this was another, the parking garage was another answer. Uh, we were going to put in another big parking light, a double light down there. Uh, there is none. There's one in the right on the road, but it's only half of light. There's no half going in. And, uh, I'm still willing to do that if that's going to be needed. Um, do you have the money, Michelle? I do. You don't, okay. Uh, <laughs> so that's just a, a, another part of the puzzle. So we'll be happy to do that. One other thing. If one of our people who is planning to move in she is planning a closing on Friday, correct? Possibly. Okay. Uh, I believe closing. I know. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we will do this in two weeks, or if I get Scott can. If, if I might, Rusty, I think the six members here agree with the nine and nine. Okay. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, I don't. I think your your concern about that is is where uh, somebody else can speak up if they disagree. But I think we agreed that nine and nine was 
as opposed to eight and 10 right. uh, was, was okay. So I can tell her that part of this is okay. Okay. All right. If somebody's moving in and they need a parking space, and we've already kind of dedicated those, and I don't see why they can't oh, park there, right? Two of them have been moved. From, huh? One of them has been moved from another tenant, and that tenant has agreed to uh, take their parking, one of their parking spaces is included in the pool. So we, we now have enough for the six units that are under agreement. We don't have enough for the other three, but as long as I keep my mouth shut and <laughs> don't get myself in trouble, then uh, we're fine and I will keep my mouth shut. So. I just want to, I'll just jump in just oh, for a second. Okay, somebody knows what they're talking about. <laughs> Originally, when the parking in, in, agreement- Introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Michelle Brown and I, I work for Rusty. Um, the parking agreements that were worked out with the city, they were, they had been moved a couple different times. And a lot of the times they were, they were, they were nine and nine. Um, when the final parking plan came out, it was eight and 10. Um, and so I guess what we're just asking for is to have the nine and nine again, so we can appease some of our, our homeowners and um, just right, keep moving it, forward. It just gets us to the right number for the units we have under agreement right now. Right. Thank you, Rusty. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any any other uh, citizens request to comment on current agenda items? <clears throat> Thank you. It's, it's just more of a question because I wasn't aware this was even being discussed. And, and uh, this is with regards to the Binney property. And apparently you're going to talk about undoing a first right of refusal. Is that correct? So uh, my, my comment is, is that I don't know why this city would get out of that because it's, it, I don't see that it's hurting a city. Uh, what, 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 I, I, I think you're misinterpreting it. The Vinny property, am I misinterpreting it? I, I think we're being asked to, to um, consider whether we want to act on a right of first refusal. Bingo. Okay, you're right. I misunderstood it. So <laughs> that being said, thank you very much. Anyone online, Mr. Anderson? No. So yes, Michelle. Can I ask tonight if you are going to make a vote on whether we have the nine and nine spaces? We do have a closing going forward on Friday um, that does sort of, this is a, a hot topic. It's on the agenda. It's, the agenda. It's, it's on the agenda, so it'll be called. I said it's on the agenda, so it'll be called. I, I don't know what happened to it. but Well, when I, I think when it comes that time, I think we should table that until everything gets straightened out, you know, then come back with a clean document. So. But, but I don't think it's inappropriate I, to suggest that no, we're in agreement about the nine and agree, nine. You I can tell your person that, that council's in agreement with nine and nine. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Mayor. That's quite all right. Um, so if there are no other comments on the current agenda items, I'll go to our uh, able surrogate for the city manager, Chief Kirk Biotti, the city manager's report. Thank you. So in your packet, city manager has provided two documents. Um, Laconia projects update is in there. Uh, just a couple items on that. Uh, they're going to be moving up from the Mass, I mean, the Elm Street project is going to be moving up, so you'll be they'll be moving on to Jefferson and Mass Ave. And as soon as the pavers become available again, they're going to uh, finish the second coat of Union Ave, moving from Stark Street down to McIntyre Circle. The only other big thing on there is um, Public Works Director has been working with the City Manager on the next plans for the paving projects, just waiting for passage of the budget for fiscal year 23 to move on to that. The second document is the monthly economic development report. Um, as you can see at the top there, there is our uh, unemployment rate is in line identical with Dunlap County and the state of New Hampshire at two and a half percent. 
certainly an increase um, from a month ago, but over three and a half percent decrease in the unemployment from a year ago at this time. So um, seeing that certainly move in the correct direction. Second page is CPIU. Um, it is, it's definitely trending the same way and more than it was last year, those two, those last two quarters. Um, and for the first quarter of uh, this calendar year, um, you can see it's eight and a half percent for March and puts us at just under 8% for the, for this first calendar year quarter. So, um, nothing slowed down from last year. And that's all I have on those two reports. I was looking for a much more extensive report. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can find one for you. Uh, you Council, 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 you want that one or is that? <laughs> so tonight we talked a little bit about, uh, the Weir's beach. Uh, as a result of talking about the parking meters and one of the items that I'd like you to take back for the managers, um, we've had um, updates of no, no update, no update, no update on the beach restoration in terms of bringing that back to life and reporting on some progress there, something that I'd asked uh, if we could see in the next report. Yep, well, I'll get that back to him. Thank you, Council Littman. <laughs> Comments here? <clears throat> Moving along to new business um, <clears throat> under 21A, which is uh, the topic is opting out of the city's right of first refusal to repurchase the Binney Media Building located at 51 Church Street, um, known as the um, old police station. In 2013, Binney Media purchased this from the city, the former police department property located at 51 Church Street. Language in the quit claim deed conveying the property included a covenant stating that Binney Media could not sell the property without first offering it to the city with the same terms and conditions as a purchase offered by a prospective buyer. A copy of the original purchase and sale agreement between the city of Laconia and Binney Media is attached. The language regarding the right of first refusal is highlighted on pages two and three. Binney Media has now received a purchase and sale agreement for sale of the property and has reached out to the city to see if it wishes to exercise its right of first refusal. Um, keep in mind, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's important. Shadows. Um, it, it, if I'm not mistaken, the offer on the property, I think it's relevant here, not the, which is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, $550,000. Correct. Correct. Okay. So that is the bona fide offer on the property um, that the city has an opportunity to um, take a, um, claim its rights under a right of first refusal to purchase it for that amount. So um go right ahead we can we can discuss after the motion or before the motion choices here if i could before um so i think when we originally um entered into the agreement to for the value that we sold it at which was minimal because we were looking for a good use to be in that building to complement the downtown the five hundred fifty thousand doesn't mean much to me without knowing the type of of business i don't need to know what it is but what is going there? Because we we were looking for something to complement the business district, the, the downtown. Um, and if it's gonna be for use that is working against all the things we're doing, I'd like to know about that. So I don't know if we're at liberty to say who the potential buyer is who's made yeah, the offer, but- I, I'm not looking for who it's, what is it? Uh, I and I don't even need to know, is. I need to even know specifically, is it? You know, for office use, is it for? Um, As I understand it, uh, Councilor Littman, it's a well-established local business involved in the construction trade um, that will be using it for offices and center of operations. Okay. And from what I understand, not necessarily a question. spot yeah. for trucks to be stored, but yeah. for their operations. Okay. Does anybody know what the assessed value is for tax purposes? When we sold it, it was a dollar. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I know. So uh, yeah. the original sale was for three hundred. Was three hundred thousand? Yeah, I don't know where we're at right now. But, Councillor uh, Cheney. 
I uh, I spent 13 years in that building. And before we give up the, our right of first refusal, I think we ought to look around and see what are our needs. The beauty of that building is it it borders this building. It borders closely. Uh, and, uh, you know, if five years from now we have to add to this building for the growth in, in what's going on in the city, expanding departments, whatever, I, I, I'd be sad to see that building go. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, and, and I appreciate what uh, Council, Councilor Lippman just uh, suggested that we know what it, the sort of thing it be, it'd be used for. I think that is important. What's also important is some sort of inventory of what our needs are as a city and whether we might need more office space in the next few years. I think that the original reason we did what we did was to get it on the tax rolls. And, and I, I guess I'm concerned about taking it off okay. with without having a specific purpose that um, we know of that we're going to use. Um, and so that, that would be my only reason. And I, I think we probably have a time limit in which to exercise this. Completely yeah, I, 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 I would hope we have some time to, to look at it. I mean, you got a public works department that's sinking. Uh, it'd be nice if at least office wise, they had some space to move into. Um, you walk down these halls here and some of these rooms are a bit more crowded than I'd like to see. And I just would hope we'd look before we leap and say, no, we don't have any interest in the building. If you look at section D, it puts us on a timeline, I believe 20 days. Yeah, where are we on the timeline? You know where we are in the time. I, I, I don't, I did talk to Scott about this and he said they have no plans for anything right now. So he was comfortable moving this, but um, I just made a note to, we'll try to check the time frame out so we can, we can get back to him yeah, well, Wednesday if we can, if we have to. I think uh, it's constant. Yeah, I, I would say I'd have to agree with Henry on this. We don't, plus, we don't want to delay a sale that's pending right now. I don't even know if we can, according to the rules of the situation. And I don't know if we're even in a position to be spending $550,000 of the city's money right now. Well, um, just as, as a response to Councillor Susie, uh, um, 2021 valuation, the land was 73.9. The building was $333,400 for a total of 407. Roughly 400,000. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes, Councilor Henry. So I, I think what, they're, what we're being asked tonight is to give up our first refusal. Because right. we have we're in line first to purchase the building. So we're asking to give that up. But I don't see why there's no reason that in the new lease that that can't be continued. That we sh we could be in there for in line for first refusal through the next company that's going to be there, because that does happen. It happened to me personally, so there is a it can be. We're we're at there asking for us to give up our first refusal now. Somebody's going to buy the building in that deed. Uh, we should be able to put the city in there for first refusal if it's sold again. Plus the pocket spaces are gonna come back to the city that were leased to Vinny Media. That lease, is, that lease that has expired already. Right. There's spaces there? Are they... Yeah, they opened that there up. Was, there was, uh, I forget how many spaces. There was remember? eight, yeah, nine that's... spaces along the fence uh, by Vinny Media that was leased to them when they bought the building. Right. So they fenced off. It's we should, we should re It's already done. It's already opened up. So it's already been reverted to the city. Yeah. I just wanted to know that because that's where the colonial will be parking in those same areas. So what's our, what's our inclination right now? I mean, I'm afraid, I don't know where we stand in the timeline, which is a concern, but I guess we can always uh, reach out and look for an extension. If we're butting up against the timeline, I don't know if they'll give it to us, but we might ask for a 10 day extension on this to, to get some further details from the city manager when he returns. Councilor Hamill, uh, 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 um, Lippman, sorry. 
So it's it's 20 days and closing within 40 days. And I think um, Councilor Felch made the point that, you know, practically um, it would be on Benny's uh, good graces that he'd want us to, to do that. And I'm not sure, you know, we have a consensus that we want to take it off the tax rolls and that we could perform in 40 days and maybe he could make it 50 days. But, you know, I, I um, also think that, you know, the original purpose was to, was to bring it on the tax rolls because we sold it at a favorable rate to get it on the tax rolls. Um, and whether we have a um, ability to, um, I think the question that Councilor Hamill's asking, I think um, Council could inform us whether we have that right or not. Yeah, it, this was already out in the sun, I believe. It was, it was made public, I think it was in the sun already. No, if we shouldn't, if we shouldn't talk about it, if we think we need to. Know. <laughs> so I would say I I would make the motion with the amendment that we ask council if we can make that a stipulation to the sale. So we're looking for a continued right of first refusal on the property. Correct. Continue on uh, with the deed, and we're also looking to have it make it explicit that the parking spaces originally leased to Bitty Media would return to the city. That, uh, that's already happened, so that's fine. It has. We can just yes. check, double check to make sure, but I'm pretty positive. Yeah, it has. has. I think it's been over a year that that's happened. She just got, right? I remember West, hearing about that. West yeah. said yes. Yeah, that has happened. Okay. We're all set on that. So, so, make, so I'll make the motion. I'll second. <laughs> Any further discussion on, on the motion that's on the table? Do you have enough information for the motion? You do. Okay, good. <laughs> I didn't. Right. I apologize. Would you tell me again what your motion is? The motion to give up the first refusal and if not, we not can to exercise it. Have the first refusal for the new owner. Any further discussion on that? It's fine. Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your hands. Six votes in the affirmative and that motion passes. Well, I'm, one thing I'm really concerned about is where we are on the time. Because if they were to say no to this. Right. Where are we? Um, I think the basically whether we have, I think Council Hamill is correct that it's possible to do what he suggested, whether we have the legal or contractual ability to do it is I think what we need Council to right. advise that's why us I said on. Bring it to Council yeah. to find out if we can. If we can, we want it. <laughs> right. So what I'm thinking here is that getting a, a, a message for when the city manager returns is to reach out to seller and seller at this point or the, whoever the seller's agent is and let them know that we're pursuing this th th this issue mm -hmm. and that we may need is there a possibility to maybe get a couple extra days if we need it because we may I, I, I'm I, we may run out the clock and I just don't know where we stand on that and that's what I'm concerned about I mean, I to that point was, we can't we can't I think, we'll just find out if we can and if we can't get it done. We on to item number 22, 22A. This is um, we have a series of um, nine motions here, three separate items. So bear with me and we'll try to get through this. Unfinished business item number 22A, second reading of resolution 2022-05 relative to submitting a grant application to and accepting a grant funding from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 for Northern Lakeport area sewer replacement. The North. You skipped one. Skip. Did I? Yeah, you skipped one. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Right. Twenty-two. A. Beach. Oh, the uh, and going forward, would it be possible to take the packet and put an identification at the top to the agenda item? I've already read that. I'm, I'm, <laughs> She's good. Yeah. yeah. I 
<laughs> Sorry, and part of that was just my error. I mean, no, it wasn't part of it, it was my error. Um, 21A, which is uh, 22A, sorry. Second reading of ordinance 2022-221 to amend city code chapter 221 vehicles and traffic regarding increasing the parking fees on Lakeside Avenue and Endicott Rock Park. Public Works has recommended that fees be increased to $1.25 per hour on Lakeside Avenue, $2.50 per hour at Endicott Rock Park. All Lakeside Avenue parking revenue goes into the general fund. The first $25,000 of revenue from Endicott Rock Park goes to the general fund. The remainder goes to an, an account for beach improvements and refurbishments. We recommend increasing the amount of Endicott Rock Park, Endicott Rock parking that goes to the general fund to $30,000. Parking fee collection period begins Saturday before Memorial Day, which is May 28th this year. The fiscal impact public works estimates that the increase of fees on Lakeside Avenue and Endicott Rock Park will raise approximately $35,000 additional for the general fund and approximately $5,000 for the beach refurbishment account. First motion is a move, a move to waive a reading of this ordinance in its entirety and to read by title only. So made by Councilor Cheney, seconded by Councilor Haynes. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor. That's six votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. A second motion will be looking to move a second reading of ordinance 2021-2022-221, amending city code chapter 221, vehicles and traffic regarding increasing the parking fees on Lakeside Avenue and at Endicott Rock Park. So made by Councillor uh, Felch, seconded by. I have comments. Well, 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 well let's, let's get it first. seconded yeah. by Councillor Cheney. So any comments, discussion? Councillor Susi. I'd like to raise the $1.25 to $2 and the $2.50 to $3. So your your motion is to raise to two dollars on Lakeside Avenue and three dollars for Endicott Rock Park. Now you made the motion, Councilor Felch. So this re requested amendment um, is it a friendly amendment or? I get a technical. I, mean, technical thing. I think uh, when we're establishing fees, you have to notice them. So I think um, I may be correct on this that we can not objecting to what you're you're saying but i think we have to notice it at the higher level before we can adopt it over what we had published here right for a public meeting yeah. yes we did a, we did a public we meeting. did a public meeting for this price but if we were going to change it we'd have to have another public meeting and i don't know if that price might be a little too high i, three dollars. I don't think it's too I, high, I was thinking a dollar fifty and stay at the 250 um, round numbers Plus the other amendment I would want to make is to strike the line that says we recommend increasing the amount of Endicott Rock parking that goes to general fund to thirty thousand. Keep it at twenty five. We've got a lot to do with the layers. I, I, you know, it's it's also has a large tip fund they can use. Also, it's interesting but too. It's because, only oh, hold on, hold on. From the parking lot, not from the whole street. So we have a big downtown to take care of. Also. This money doesn't go to that. I understand that, but something's going to help offset the inflation of everything else. So I think um, I will point out uh, that uh, Chief Biotti brought to my attention on page 50, uh, 221-44, use of meter deposits. I'm not sure that was changed to 30,000. Well, it wasn't changed to 30,000. And would we change that to 30,000 to be consistent with the motion or just leave it alone? And so the, I, I'm just wondering whether that is congruent with the motion. What line are you on? I am on page 50, section 221-44, the last sentence. I suggest procedurally we, we um, take, it, take it back and 
we could have some further discussion, but I don't think we should try to design this on the fly. So in other words, we should table it. Well, I think the only reason not to table is just to give a sense so that. Um, right, but discuss it first. And, and then table. Right. Yeah. So yeah, as far as you're saying, yes, if we strike. Well, well, if you motion a table and it sits on the table in its current state, I'm wondering if you defeat it and re-notice it again and have the discussion, can you then put adjusted numbers in there? Well, I think the only reason is whoever is going to redo it ought to know what we're kind of comfortable um, right. doing public noticing on. So, so we're not doing this a third time. <laughs> May is coming. Well, I was gonna, a third time would put us over the uh, Memorial Day. So. Right. So we really need to, yeah. to I think, express something that we can have a consensus around and get it in place. For, so the, for the other thing we could do is we could pass this as is with the amendment for the 25,000. Yep. And then if we want to increase it again, we can bring it forward with a new increase. That's another option. I guess the, the issue is... It, we, <laughs> So if we pass it as is, we're going to have to do it a second time anyway. So right, just, we're going to have to do it a second time, but at least we can pass this with the amendment for the twenty five thousand. Assume it all comes back at once, and then let's bring it all back at once. Yeah. Just keep yeah. it clean. We should be able to get it done before the the, the parking yeah. meters need to be. Would you, uh, yes, would you guys? Wise, uh, we're going to be close. Probably, we'll need to look to see timing when we can get everything done before the 28th. Right, and you have a company that has to come out and do this. Right. right. All right, well. well we, we know that they're gonna come out and make an adjustment whether it's it's X or, or X plus five, it's. All right, well, well so they're gonna come, if they, don't, if they don't get it in place right on time, I mean, we're still going up at some point, maybe June, but I, I don't think that would be so bad. But I think I agree with Henry here. What we should be talking about is what's the number for Lakeside Avenue? This mo the, this motion is for one twenty five an hour. Is there consensus around two dollars an hour on Lakeside Avenue? I think that's too high. Okay, so uh, I mean, look at comparison to all the other cities and towns. Seacoast right. they did they do two dollars. Yeah, I, I don't think people shop. Nobody recreation does. areas based on based on the fees that's right I man i think you come to where's beach your park it costs you two bucks an hour you stay for two hours it's four bucks it's i don't have a problem it's four bucks over instead of three bucks i guess i look to the counselors that represent that area as to i think we heard from mr Jesus. ames he was okay with the, <laughs> the fire chief's the one who should be answering these questions <laughs> uh, uh, do you want to weigh in on this at all uh, Councilor Cheney, I, I, listen i'm i I think $2 an hour doesn't sound outrageous to me. Okay. I don't know about $3 at the beach. I'm Let's keep it at two, or well, we can keep it at 250. That's still yeah, going I up. I agree with that, two, 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 and two, All right. yeah. two and 250. I can agree with two that. And yeah. So what we're going to do is we are going to, um, vote to they're going to vote to table, then it's going to come off the table and it's still not accurate at that time. I'm wondering whether we just, I don't know what we do, defeat it and notice it again or, I think we're, I think our. My suggestion would be that you amend it and then say that you want to notice it for the next public. That's good. That's what we're going to do. Thank you, Katie. We're going to amend this to $2 an hour on Lakeside Avenue. And we're also going to make sure to amend it. Because it's $25,000, not 30 to be right. Correct. Okay, so that would would like to have those amendments. Who all, all in favor of? Uh, who's who? You're okay with it? You've got the first uh, council. Let me be the second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of those amendments, please indicate by raising your hands. That's six votes in the affirmative. So now it's been amended, but we need to notice it again and put it on the agenda for the uh, next city council scheduled for a public meeting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We found our way out of that <laughs> quagmire. All right. I think we did. Thank you, Madam. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We convinced ourselves we did. <laughs> thank you, Bob. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Katie. I really appreciate that. Mr. Mayor, yes. you want to set the date for the public hearing just for the Sorry. record? When's our next meeting? <laughs> just the 8th, May 8th. May 8th. Okay. I think it's May 8th. May 9th. 9th. May 9th. May 9th. May 9th. May 9th it is. <clears throat> you have to notice that pretty quick, right? Yes. 
All right, so we're now on to item number 22B, which is the Northern Lakeport Area Sewer Replacement Project. Second reading of resolution 202205 relative to submitting a grant application to and accepting grant funding from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 for the Northern Lakeport Area Sewer Replacement Project. The Northern Lakeport Area Sewer Replacement Project is listed as Project 77 on the project priority list, scheduled to receive a 30% ARPA grant in the amount of $747,600. The Northern Lakeport Area Sewer Replacement Project is currently in final design, has estimated project cost $2.5 million. The funding for this project will be a loan from the Clean Water State Revolving Loan Fund. The ARPA grant will reduce the loan amount by $747,600. So we have a series of um, three motions here. Um, first one is to waive a reading, a move to waive a reading of resolution 2022-05 in its entirety to read by title only, so made by Councilor Cheney, seconded by Councilor Haynes. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, that's six votes in the affirmative, that motion passes. Secondly, Looking for a, to move a second reading of resolution 2022-05 relative to submitting a grant application to and accepting grant funding from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 for the Northern Lakeport Area Sewer Replacement Project. So made by Councillor Felch, seconded by Councillor Genie. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand, six votes in the affirmative. And finally, looking for a motion to move to approve resolution 2022-05 relative to submitting a grant application to and accepting grant funding from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 for the Northern Lakeport Area Sewer Replacement Project. So moved by Councilor Phelps, seconded by Councilor Hamill. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'd ask the if you're in favor, raise your hand. Six votes in the affirmative and that motion passes. Moving on to item number 22C, the second reading of resolution 2022-06 relative to submitting a grant application to and accepting grant funding from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 for wastewater planning. Public Works is working with an engineering consultant to develop a sewer master plan scope that includes an analysis of the existing system, recommendations for system rehabilitation and expansion, and an intensive cleaning and inspection program for existing sewer siphons, which are <clears throat> primarily located at Brook and River Crossings. Laconia is eligible to receive up to $100,000 in grant funding for a sewer master plan. Looking for a motion right now, uh, series of three. First one is to move, move to waive reading of resolution 2022-06 in its entire and read by title only. So made by Councilor Cheney, seconded by Councilor Haynes. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. Six votes in the affirmative. That vote, that motion passes. Secondly, we're looking for a motion to move a second reading of resolution 2022 06 relative to submitting a grant application to accepting grant funding from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 for wastewater planning. So made by Councillor Cheney, seconded by Councillor Susi. So, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. That's a six votes in the affirmative, and that motion passes. And finally, we're looking for a to move to approve resolution 2022-06 relative to submitting a grant application to and accepting grant funding from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 for wastewater planning. So made by Councilor Felch, seconded by Councilor Haynes. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. So that's six votes in the affirmative and that motion passes. Um, that brings us to final item, which is item 22D. If there is a tie on this item and any votes, I will not be, I will recuse myself. Um, voting on it, sir. Right, and just wanna make it clear for the record. All right, so uh, this is in regards to parking spaces. Um, we are, um, what's the wording we'd like to use here? We're not voting on it tonight. Um, table. Motion to table, well, someone's gonna make the motion so made by Councilor Cheney, seconded by Councilor Susie. All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. Technical question, is it already on the table? No. No, it wasn't. Okay. Nobody got off. Six votes in the affirmative, it's on the table now. I'd like to adjourn the meeting at 8.42 p.m.
Oh, good. Good.